It's week 16 of the National Football League, and we'll see the versatile Devo Samuel. Always staying busy, he's your league leader in receiving yards. It's the 49ers and the Ravens on Monday Night Primetime. We are about 40 miles or so south of Candlestick Point at a place that first opened back in 2014 as you get a look at Levi Stadium here in Santa Clara, California. Tonight it's a compelling late season clash here in Week 16 as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Now this, not your typical Monday night with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Merry Christmas to you and yours, everyone at home. But Charles, this, the third of three here on this Christmas Day. We saw the 49ers, remember, on Thanksgiving night as well. Now they're back, looking to turn the tables on the team that got the better of them in Super Bowl 47. And that was a decade ago. And that was brother versus brother. That was the storyline. One still remains, but the storyline that exists today, two really good teams get ready to go at it. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. Leading them out, someone who took the league by storm last year is the most famous Mr. Irrelevant ever from Iowa State. It's Brock Purdy. It was fun getting ready for this game, wasn't it? Because normally we talk to the coaches and the players. I think you and I asked to talk to the trainer to see how his arm is going to be. A lot of ice I after mean, last week. After last week's game, boy, what a performance that was. And you know who else is having fun? Receivers because they get a chance to do what they do best, which is go out and catch the ball. Yeah, and that last week effort, he threw for well over 400 yards. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. First carry for Christian McCaffrey. And McCaffrey going to pick up a Niners first down as he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. The Niners at 11-3 and three on the year. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind and the best way to get in that good frame of mind, winning. So they come in feeling good. They've got the home crowd behind them. I think they're going to be tough to beat in this one. So the completion good for seven there. And that will bring up second down. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. Still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give them the yardage that they needed, but they really want him to be that guy, and that's what they're doing early in this game. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Samuel. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Four yards there on the carry, gets it back to second and 11. Looking to throw, Purdy, and this is incomplete. George Kittle, the receiver that he was looking for. And that takes us from second to third down. We're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. He's got his target, that's complete. And he's gonna be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 31 yard line. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Back to throw, Purdy connects with Kittle underneath. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. In last week's game for Kittle, there are the numbers. Five catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. It certainly seems like he gets a touchdown each week, doesn't it? Here we are in the final month of the season. He's the NFL leader in touchdown catches. He has been an absolute machine. And McCaffrey going to pick up a Niners first down as he's down at the 17-yard line. 
They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Back to throw. Purdy eluding the pressure right. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. This has been a long drive. You know that defense, they're craving to get off the field. They were able to force it free, but couldn't recover. Yeah, and on the offensive side of the ledger, they were thinking about how do we punctuate this drive with six, right? Make it an exclamation point. Instead, you got to put a question mark next to this drive now after the fumble, even though they recovered it. They'll get 17 back there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And his kick is good. And the 49ers take a 3 0 lead. Well, they had a pretty decent opening drive, Charles. Pretty balanced. They had the passing game going and the rushing attack, too. I would think they have to be happy with that start because you get your ground game going, which means your offensive line and your runners are pretty happy. And then you get your aerial attack going as well. So your quarterback and receivers have smiles on their faces. Now both up to speed, awaiting their next possessions for this game. They can't wait to get started again. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup, love his moxie. One of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor. Gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But he did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss. And despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, He's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. On the run, this is J.K. Dobbins, and he's going to have a Ravens first down as the tackle made here at the 36. So from the 36 now, first and 10. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. You look at this Niner defense, currently number one in the NFL against the run. And I know, just like me, you're fired up about this one because this is the irresistible object in the immovable force. They're going head-to-head, -head, number one versus number one. I've talked about that running back's renaissance for a while. Can they slow these guys down? Where's my helmet? I want to play. Jeez, you are fired up. Something's got to give. Third down, Jackson has taken in by his big tight end. Look at the big man rumble. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Ravens are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. Oh, this is blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. But he will not be able to bring this one back in the extra point attempt. Unsuccessful. But there's a blocked extra point. I remember playing, and we had one of those go against us. I remember our kicker and our holder told the head coach, just relax, coach. Why are you yelling? Don't worry. That's just one point. Oh, my. Those coaches see a point is gold to them because you never know how it's going to turn out later. Exactly. That's why I was just going to say first quarter. We'll see if this has any implications as the game goes on. I still can't believe they told the head coach to relax. <laughs> Bad move. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And he's able to get out to the 32 right down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Six three is our score after one. It's the NFL on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He'll buy some time right. This one caught by Kittle. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 18 yards, first down Niners. Looks like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down.
From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. This is McCaffrey on the give. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. 11 more yards there. This methodical drive continues. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the run. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. The defense is ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to double in the back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Purdy now to throw. That is caught by the tight end killer. Touchdown, 49ers. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Niners have regained the lead. What a great drive that was. A long drive, sustained, well executed. I love what we're seeing out of him here in year two, right? This young quarterback continues to evolve and grow. He's really the adage right now that John Wooden, the famous basketball coach, used to say. Be quick, but don't hurry. You can see that everything is happening for him, but he's not taking it at a pace that he can't sustain. Moody good with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive. They watched the other side just score, but remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. He's to the 15. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Zay Flowers, 77 yards. And the Ravens are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. Tucker with the extra point, and that gives him a three-point lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Brock Purdy in the offense back out there. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head, head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. Hardy to throw it on first down. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. So in Raven territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 34. Hardy's throw taken in by Samuel. And 
taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. Purdy looking to throw. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. Purdy now on second down. Another grab here for the dynamic Christian McCaffrey. And all the way down inside the five to the four. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well, like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Now Purdy. And he holds it in. And the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Kyle Juszczyk from four yards out. And the 49ers have yet again retaken the lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Now Moody for the PAT. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive. And they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second down, and this one again complete as well. And then folks just dropping the confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on the first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their moment. Odell Beckham Jr. Now inside the 25. Odell Beckham. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Odell Beckham. 75 yards. And the Ravens have moved out in front. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And that gives him a three-point lead. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it's OBJ, Odell Beckham, who ends it with a touchdown reception. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And he's got McCaffrey open, complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Purdy. It's going to be caught by Samuel. They find some open field here. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 20. 36 yards on the play. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Here's Purdy. Again, he'll find Samuel for the completion. And they've got it inside the 10 at the end. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Throwing here, Purdy. This is caught. Touchdown. Debo Samuel from eight yards out. And the 49ers will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. 
These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, but <laughs> offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes. That's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far and fun to watch. Moody good with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half. And with them trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get in the field goal range. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes that it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Jackson options out left. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. The keeper nets him only a yard, and that's going to bring up fourth. Here's Jordan Stout now. Back to return it, Christian McCaffrey. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you cross country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in everyone to our EA Sports halftime report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta, where it was the visiting Colts who were able to pick up the road victory. Anthony Richardson leading the way with a couple of touchdown passes in the victory. Next, we'll take the trip north to the Steel City to check on the Steelers at home in Pittsburgh. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Najee Harris, two touchdown runs to lead the way. Lastly, we head to Southern California to check on the Rams at home at SoFi Stadium. And they were winners in that ball game over the visiting New Orleans Saints. Cooper Cup leading the way with three touchdown catches. The Niners got a solid first half outing by their second year quarterback, Brock Purdy. He was slicing and dicing this defense and wound up with three touchdown passes in the first half. With both of these offenses having their way, it's not likely they'll need to be doing a whole lot at halftime, but the defenses are definitely in need of some adjusting. And for the call of the second half, let's go back out to Brandon and Charles. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Raven offense set to start this third quarter. But Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. The gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. On second down, a run with Dobbins. And the defense closes quickly there, and will get maybe a yard to the 33. They would put together a job description for a middle linebacker. We would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Ravens have taken the lead here this third quarter. Tucker with the extra point, and that gives them a three-point lead. 
So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it's Mark Andrews who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. Debo Samuel trotting out with his offense to start this next drive. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. And Debo going to have a Niners first down as he's got it up to the 28-yard line. Looking to throw. Purdy. Open man is Samuel. Complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. First down San Francisco. The pickup 14 yards. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route. Just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Adafe Owe there on the tackle. Here's second and seven. And Purdy, he's going to shift him around into something else. Here's a second and seven. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for offense. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Purdy on fourth down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a 40 dollars first down. Good work there on fourth and one. They get seven to move the chains. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. Powers through. They can't tackle it. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 56 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Most of the damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run about three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. Back to throw, Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. Purdy now to throw off the play action. On the move to his left. And he just chopped that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Purdy will set up to throw it here. They'll roll him out right. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll try and power it in with Hughes And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Only a yard 
on the pickup there. Second and goal. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. McCaffrey. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Touchdown 49ers! George Kittle, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Niners have moved down in front here in the final minute of the third quarter. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Moody good with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. They had gotten the lead with the opening drive touchdown in the third quarter. Now they relinquish that lead back. Could be in for an interesting second half. It certainly appears that way, doesn't it? Almost turning into one of those pendulum games, right? Where it swings back and forth. But who's going to make the play that changes that? That maybe it puts it on one side and keeps it there. And they run the option on second down. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. On third down, Jackson. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. To the end zone, they pick six from the 49er D as they score the touchdown. Well, that offense trying to erase that deficit, get a little bit closer here and climb back into this game in the third quarter. Instead, they further their disadvantage, Charles, with a pick six. And that defense came out willing to do anything necessary to defend that lead. I think they looked around the huddle and said, who's going to make the big play? Who's it going to be? And the person just ended up in the end zone with the football, he was the one that answered the bell. Moody good with the extra point. And that pushes the lead up to 11. One quarter remains here in week 16. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. Where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And we'll see if they can band back together after the pick six. It hurt badly, but still within striking distance. A two-score game with a good chunk of time on the clock. A little jet sweep to start the drive. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays. You know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. He was under duress, surveying, trying to find somebody to get the ball out of his hands. In, in the meantime, the defense, they took it out of his hands. And when the ball snapped, I know exactly what the defense is thinking. Get a sack, put him on the ground. But when you can also knock the ball free while doing so, oh, there's the bonus for you as a defender. 
Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, that he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. 62 yards rushing for him now to this point. Ball on the eight, it's second and four. Again, they run, again, it's McCaffrey. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball and continue to feed him. It, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. It's caught, back up. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And the Ravens first down. Now it's Jackson. That one into the hands of Flowers. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing is Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Just need a yard here. Second and one. To throw is Jackson. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. That is caught at the seven-yard line. The offense on third down tonight. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. And this is going to be intercepted. And the 49ers are going to take possession here. It's a touchback. And they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, I mean, field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at the 20. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Purdy looking to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 15 for the Niners there to first down. Now Purdy, rolling to his right, and returns it right back to Samuel. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Purdy now to throw. This one caught by Kittle. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. He got 29 yards that time. That's another 49er first down. First and 10 at the 
So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. Touchdown! Debo Samuel with his second touchdown of the night. And the 49ers stretch this fourth quarter lead even further, and they are closing in on win number 12 of the season. Moody good with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, OK, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late, not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Here we go, it's Jackson on fourth down. He's got his target, that's complete. And he is gonna have a Ravens first down as they manage to convert, and that'll keep the drive alive. Jackson from the shotgun. Throw caught by Flowers. He's got room to roam. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Zay Flowers, his second touchdown of the night. And the Ravens have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a camper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Back to the air on second down, Purdy. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. I thought at first he'd try to run, but he just kept buying time to his right. Finally, nothing there. He wisely gets rid of it. Purdy with it on third and long. Open man is Samuel, complete. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And a big turnover there his guys will get the football back this is first and ten now Jackson and this one incomplete so the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining here comes second down Jackson to throw now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Third down. 
Throwing. Jackson. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked up by Talanoa Hufanga. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show 